In today's video, I thought it would be fun to take a break from talking about the brand new and exciting Apple Silicon chips and take a look at the first Apple Silicon processor, which was in, you may have guessed this by now, the original first generation iPad that came out back in 2010. So today we're gonna to take a trip down memory lane and unbox this original sealed 16 gigabyte iPad. And we're gonna talk about how things have changed in the 10 years since the first Apple Silicon chip. So the last time I saw an original iPad sealed in its original packaging was in April of 2010. My dad bought the original iPad, he got the 64 gigabyte version, and he actually kept it for like five years, which was rare, because these things did not age super well. And I just remember going out on my bike looking for the UPS truck when it was getting delivered. Sealed iOS devices are almost always fake, so I'm not exactly holding out confidence that this is in fact going to be genuine. So we're gonna unbox it. We're gonna find out if I got scammed and will therefore be receiving a refund or if this is actually an original first gen iPad in its original box. Now in the past when I've done unboxings, I always get comments criticizing me for using some terrible scissors to unbox pretty much every package. So today I've gone and I fixed the problem this is my unboxing knife. This is a quality knife from the fine knifesmiths over at Ikea, and it's been provided today courtesy of my kitchen, so big shout out to them. Uh, let's go ahead and unbox this thing. All right, I'm not gonna lie, this is a lot better than using the scissors. I might, I might use the kitchen knife full time. The feel of this box does not seem right to me. Also, this label looks like it's crooked. I don't know, I might be nitpicking. It's been about 10 years since I've seen an original box for one of these things, so I don't know, could be real. Let's find out. Huh, that is Interesting. That pull tab looks legit. From watching old contemporary unboxings, that looks to be correct. I think this is real. That is a smell that you don't get <laughs> with a fake original iPad. This is, uh, this is so far checking out. The, the material here looks good. Do we have our Apple stickers? Yes, we do. Guys, I think we've done it. This is an actual first generation iPad that has never been opened. Not gonna lie, I did not expect that. <laughs> when I set out to make this video, I was kind of expecting, okay, for 300 bucks, I don't think this is really gonna be an original iPad in its sealed box and I would just unbox it and be like, oh, well, I got scammed, uh-oh. And then we would just go on and, and talk a bit about the first generation iPad, Apple Silicon, and that sort of thing. But it looks like we, <laughs> almost by accident, do in fact have a genuine original iPad. I mean, this, this seal looks pretty accurate. This is exactly the way that they came with the pull tab here by the home button. This is definitely a real booklet that looks completely new. I mean, I don't see any sign inside this box that it's been opened before, and the actual iPad itself looks to be completely perfect. Another thing to check here, do the serial numbers match? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure if this thing is going to have any battery in it. In fact, I'm leaning towards probably no, given that it's been in a box for 10 years. Whew, look at that. Sleek. Mmm. All right, well, let's go ahead and see if this will actually power on. My money's on probably not. 
A few moments later. Not. Let's open this up. Ooh, that's the, the stiff feel of a brand new Apple charger. I almost said lightning charger. Mmm. That's real. That smells good. Yeah, there we go. I always liked these small little bricks. They look like MacBook chargers, but they're little babies. All right, so the iPad is now powering up. Look at that. For the first time in 10 years. There it goes. This should be on iOS 4. Ah, you love to see it. Let's see if it'll actually get there, though. A few inches later. So it's boot looping, which is not great. Tomorrow. Hi, it's tomorrow. We're back. So what happened with the iPad, the reason why it wouldn't boot up is because this thing has been sitting in a box for about 10 years, somewhere probably around mid 2011, the battery went flat. And what happens with older iPads when the battery runs out and they don't shut down correctly, or in this case, they have never started up in the first place. When you actually do connect them to power, they try to boot up, and then when they get about 10 seconds in, they realize that there isn't any battery and it shuts down, and then it tries to boot up again, and then it shuts down, and you end up in a boot loop. So the way I got around it was I put the iPad in DFU mode and connected it to a MacBook, let it charge for a couple of hours, and then sure enough, there you go, iPad is now working. And so what we now have is the first Apple product with Apple Silicon, the A4 chip. This is the first time that Apple designed their own processor. Now, I know what a couple of you are thinking right now, and that is, well, hang on a second. The iPad came out in 2010. That's three years after the original iPhone. So weren't they already using Apple Silicon processors in the iPhones? Actually, they weren't. The original iPhone 2G used a 32-bit Samsung RISC ARM processor that was originally 620 megahertz, but was then underclocked to 412 megahertz. And they paired this with 128 megabytes of eDRAM and a PowerVR MBX Lite 3D GPU. But when it came to the iPad and then later the iPhone 4 and iPod Touch fourth generation, Apple decided to develop their own processor based on the ARM instruction set. The A4 chip has a single core ARM Cortex A8 CPU, which was manufactured on Samsung's 45 nanometer fabrication process. Because Apple designed the A4 themselves in collaboration with Samsung, the CPU is able to run at a higher clock rate than earlier ARM CPUs. So the iPad actually runs at one gigahertz. In fact, there were four different Apple products that used the A4 chip, but none of them were implemented in the same way. There was the iPad, the iPod Touch fourth generation, the iPhone 4, and the second generation Apple TV. Because the iPad is a larger device, it's able to effectively dissipate more heat, and so Apple was able to put the full fat one gigahertz A4 chip but for the iPod and the iPhone, because they're a smaller package and they need to be more efficient, they underclocked it to 800 megahertz. But the differences don't stop there. In the iPad, the iPod Touch, and the Apple TV, it has 256 megabytes of LPDDR RAM, but in the iPhone, it has 512 megabytes of LPDDR RAM. So out of the four devices that have the A4 chip, none of them are exactly the same version of the A4 chip. It's crazy to think just how far things have come since this iPad was introduced. I mean, a single core one gigahertz processor with 256 megabytes of RAM, and now we're looking at eight cores. The performance cores are some of the most powerful CPU cores at all, just period, it's absolutely unbelievable the pace at which Apple has kept up this innovation for the past 10 years. And the iPad itself has come a really long way in those 10 years as well. I mean, when this came out, it was criticized because a lot of people wondered why it even existed. I mean, it didn't really do anything that a normal iOS device couldn't. It was basically just a giant iPod touch. Now, the iPad is its own ecosystem. I mean, you can buy the keyboard for it and boom, it's a laptop. It's, it's a complete transformation. I remember playing around with the apps on the original iPad and for basically the first year, almost every application was running in the zoom mode where it would launch in the same size as an iPhone app and then you would 
zoom it in and it had giant borders around it and it was all pixelated. It was not a very good experience, not typical of an Apple product, certainly. But when push comes to shove, this is a textbook first generation Apple product. It only got iOS updates for like a year. The design was replaced within a year. It's not particularly thin and elegant and they really did not age all that well. And I think that's one of the big differences between the first Apple Silicon of any sort and the first Apple Silicon Max. This thing felt adapted. It felt like someone took an iPod Touch and then enlarged it 400%. The Apple Silicon Max don't have that same first generation product feel. Everything that I would want to do on a Mac, the Apple Silicon Macs do and do better than their predecessors, except for boot camp. Now, I don't want you guys to think that I'm being mean to the first generation iPad because, you know, granted, it was a very strange launch and it got defunct pretty quickly. But this is actually a really, really significant product because Apple was actually talking about developing a tablet before they even talked about developing the iPhone. Steve Jobs had wanted to make a tablet-like device for quite a few years as Microsoft was trying to do the same and Apple thought they could do it better. Definitely makes sense. This is Steve Jobs we're talking about. So in a weird way, the iPhone was actually a shrunken down version of the iPad, even though the iPad seems like a blown up version of the iPhone. Huh, how about that? But regardless, whether you think the first generation iPad was a success or a total flop, you can't deny that what it started was nothing short of revolutionary. Even if you think that iPads are still terrible, Apple Silicon is already changing the world and it's only been here for a couple of weeks. So just think what it's going to mean in the future. And this is where it all began. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. I found it very surprising, to be honest, when I didn't get scammed. Uh, that That's always fun. It's always fun not being scammed. If you think it's fun to not be scammed, you should drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought. Also, while you're down there, make sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, at Luke Miani, and check out my Twitch channel and my subreddit. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video.